live from Washington, this is BBC News. Huge explosions over Gaza as Israel intensifies its aerial bombardment and expands its ground operations. Over the last few hours, we have intensified our bombing over Gaza. The ground forces are also extending their operations this evening. The UN calls for an immediate humanitarian truce as 120 countries vote in favor of a resolution. Meanwhile, the humanitarian situation in Gaza grows worse. The Hamas-run health ministry says 7,000 people have been killed since Israel's bombing. And we can bring you some other news as well. U.S. media is reporting that the gunman in the Lewiston shootings has been found dead after a three-day manhunt. We'll be standing by for an update from police this hour. We'll bring you that live when it starts. Hello, I'm Carl Massman. We start with that breaking news out of the state of Maine. The suspect in Wednesday's mass shooting has been found dead. That's according to CBS News, our partner here in the U.S. The suspect is thought to have died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Robert Card, a former U.S. Army reservist, allegedly opened fire at a bar and at a bowling alley in the city of Lewiston, killing 18 people aged between 14 and 76. Now, the killing triggered a huge manhunt over the past 48 hours or so. There were orders for people to shelter in their homes. Officials had also been scrutinizing a possible suicide note that may have been left behind. Maine State Police plan to hold a news conference very shortly. They'll be bringing us the latest news from Lewiston City Hall. This all comes hours after police lifted a shelter-in-place order for the normally very quiet community there in Maine. Well, of course, we can turn to our other top story now as we await the press conference, as we see, which we do believe to start uh, momentarily. There have been waves of intense Israeli airstrikes over Gaza, much heavier than in previous nights. Now, the Israeli army says it's increasing the number of airstrikes on the territory and expanding its ground force operations. In Gaza, sirens are warning of more rocket fire to come. Communications, including phone and internet, have been cut off, making it nearly impossible for residents to reach anybody. Amid the darkness, as you can see, explosions have been intensifying. The Israeli Defense Forces is warning Gaza City residents to move south for their own safety. Hamas's military wing says it's clashing with Israeli forces in northern Gaza and targeting two southern Israeli cities with, quote, intense missile barrage. An overwhelming majority of the United Nations General Assembly on Friday voting in favor of an immediate truce in Gaza and adopting a resolution that condemns all acts of violence against Palestinian and Israeli civilians. It calls for unhindered aid and protection of civilians. We'll bring you more on what took place in the United Nations later coming up in the program. Now, it's happening as the humanitarian situation in Gaza is growing increasingly dire. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society says that they will run out of fuel in the coming hours and will be unable to provide emergency medical services in Gaza without fuel for ambulances. Here now, our international editor, Jeremy Bowen. He has the latest for us from Jerusalem. And our other big story, that breaking news that coming out of the state of Maine, that the uh, suspect in that shooting has been found dead. We want to go live now to our North America correspondent, Shingai Nyoka, who's standing by in Maine. And Shingai, as we are awaiting a press conference there from local authorities, just bring us up to date. What's the latest that you know where you are? Well, yes, we are um, at the City Hall in downtown Lewiston, where we're waiting for that press conference. But earlier on, the county sheriff's office, office issued a statement uh, confirming that Robert Card has been found dead. Uh, we haven't heard any more information from that, but uh, sources of our partner station, CBS, uh, confirmed that he would have been found dead in Lisbon.
which is the city uh, adjoining the town of Lewiston. It's been a frantic 48 hours for law enforcement. The city has been in lockdown, but that was lifted a few hours ago. Um, we also understand uh, that the, um, the, the, the air and the, 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 the search was by air, it was by land. Uh, divers were in the water searching for this man. Uh, but you might be able to hear around me that there are vehicles that are starting to move as the city comes back to life. I was at a bar a few hours ago uh, that had decided to open, uh, but I think a lot of people are saying that things will never be the same again after this. Yeah, a small state there in Maine, only 1.3 million people. It has one of the nation's lowest homicide rates. What have people been telling you along those lines uh, about how this mass shooting, which was uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, this year in the country, has affected the community? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're all set. Appreciate it. Let's go. Well, there you go. That press conference just wrapping up, starting with the uh, governor of Maine, Janet Mills, and then proceeding uh, with various uh, police authorities there. Confirmation that the suspect in Wednesday's mass shooting, Robert Card, has indeed been found dead. The body located uh, in nearby Lisbon Falls around 7.45 p.m. on Friday or about three hours ago. Um, police authorities confirming that it was from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. And as you heard, the governor herself and those sentiments echoed by, by later speakers saying that everyone in the community breathing a sigh of relief and that, of course, everyone there still grieving for the families who did lose loved ones in that mass shooting. Again, 18 people killed and 13 more injured. And that breaking news coming in that the suspect in that shooting has now been found dead of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. And as we've been hearing, that news could be some small comfort to the families of those who did lose lives uh, of loved ones in that tragedy. Earlier on Friday, officials releasing the names and identities of all 18 victims. The youngest was just 14 years old. The oldest was 76. Four members of Maine's deaf community were among those killed on Wednesday in that mass shooting. All right, I want to turn back now to our other main story this hour. There has been a significant intensification of Israeli airstrikes over Gaza. Huge explosions lighting up the night sky above the territory. That comes after the Israeli army said that it was expanding its ground operations there. And we have our panel of guests here to discuss that with me in studio is Elise Labitt, founder of Zivi Media. And we also have uh, our contributing editor at Polit... Oh, just Elise, sorry. <laughs> just Elise here joining us. And we appreciate you being here all night with us to continue My to uh, analyze what's been going on. And uh, the first of all, and, and we were discussing this earlier, it's interesting about the timing, isn't it? It's been about three weeks now right. since that first attack by Hamas. Right. What do you make of the timing? And of course, we shouldn't say that this is the awaited right. ground incursion, That's but important. this is maybe the most significant military action we've seen. What do you make of the large gap there, three weeks? We need to wrap this up. And, and I think what the U.S. is also looking is for, um, and I think we're going to start to be talking a lot more about this, is you know, where is, where is this going? What is the end game? Right. And right. we always Before hear- Before we get yeah. to that, because I do right. want to touch on yeah. that, um, just as we're talking about that international pressure and at the United Nations, yep. uh, the UN approving that non-binding resolution, yes. calling for a humanitarian truce in Gaza just hours after Israel's defense forces announced their exp uh, expansion of ground operations. It's the first UN response to this ongoing war. As we were touching on, the Security Council had failed on four different attempts to reach any kind of consensus, some vetoes, uh, some votes against by the United States. The Israeli ambassador, after today's resolution passed, condemned it. Take a listen. And still with me here in studio, Elise Labitt, contributing editor at Politico magazine and founder of Zivi Media. And just as we continue to dive into what we've been seeing taking place uh, with this now increased military action by Israel into Gaza. I think it's also interesting not only to look at the politics in the U.S., but the politics in Israel. Prime Minister Netanyahu didn't have a whole lot of support 
even heading up into this uh, attack by right. Hamas. How much pressure do you think there's been on him and on the Israeli government to take some sort of action here? Uh, See how that political situation uh, plays out. In the meantime, we do have our BBC teams on the ground uh, in the region, and we want to take a closer look now at how Israel's ground operations might play out. Our international editor, Jeremy Bowen, has more on that. How are these troops going to go in and fight it? And as many experts saying, a difficult battlefield inside of Gaza. Elise Labbitt, thank you so much for your insights. We'll leave it there. We'll be back with more details at the top of the hour on our top story. Stay with us. On the Live from Washington, this is BBC News. Officials in the U.S. state of Maine have confirmed that the suspect in Wednesday night's mass shooting has been found dead. Large explosions seen in Gaza as Israel's bombardment builds. Israel also says it's expanding its ground operations. And the UN calls for an immediate humanitarian truce as 120 countries vote in favor of a resolution. Hello, I'm Carl Massman. We begin in the U.S. state of Maine, where police say the man suspected of killing 18 people in a shooting has been found dead after a two-day manhunt. The news comes hours after police lifted a shelter-in-place order for the normally quiet community. It's still unclear exactly where the body of Robert Card, age 40, was found or how he died. At a news conference just a few minutes ago at Lewiston City Hall, Maine Governor Janet Mills said that the body was found in Lisbon, nearby where the shooting occurred. Let's get more now on that story. We can go live to Maine, where our North America correspondent Shingai Nyoka is standing by. And Shingai, what's the latest we know? Of course, that press conference, uh, you were there just wrapping up a few minutes ago. What more did the governor and other officials say? Our North America correspondent Shingai Nyoka reporting for us from Maine after that press conference just a few minutes ago confirming that the suspect in that mass shooting has been found uh, and it looks as if uh, that body has now been recovered near the scene. Shingai, thank you so much for your reporting. Well, our other top story, there have been waves of intense Israeli airstrikes over Gaza, much heavier than in previous nights. The Israeli army says it's increasing the number of airstrikes on the territory and expanding its ground force operations. In Gaza, sirens are warning of more rocket fire to come. Communications, including phone and internet, have been cut off, making it nearly impossible for residents to reach anyone. Amid the darkness, as you can see, explosions are intensifying. The Israeli Defense Forces is warning that Gaza City residents should move south for their own safety. Hamas's military wing says it's clashing with Israeli forces in northern Gaza and targeting two southern Israeli cities with its own, quote, intense missile barrage. Now, an overwhelming majority of the United Nations General Assembly voted in favor of an immediate truce in Gaza. That was on Friday, adopting a resolution that condemns all acts of violence against Palestinian and Israeli civilians. It calls for unhindered aid and protection of civilians. We'll bring you more on what took place in the United Nations later on in the program. And it's happening, of course, as the humanitarian situation in Gaza is growing increasingly dire. 
The Palestinian Red Crescent Society says that they will run out of fuel in the coming hours and will be unable to provide emergency medical services in Gaza without fuel for ambulances. With the latest on the situation there, our international editor Jeremy Bowen has this report from Jerusalem. A short while ago, I asked Elise Labatt, contributing editor at Politico magazine and founder of Zivi Media, about the significant intensification of Israeli airstrikes over Gaza. Well, turning to some other news now, and the U.S. and China are working towards a possible meeting next month in San Francisco between President Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping. This comes after Beijing's top diplomat met with his counterpart, Antony Blinken, and President Biden at the White House, the latest in a series of high-level meetings aimed at easing tensions between the two countries. The Chinese foreign minister, Wang Yi, wrapped up his three-day trip to Washington on Thursday. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy sits on the House Select Committee on the Strategic Competition between the U.S. and the Chinese Communist Party. And he says that the talks are a hopeful sign between the two nations, but there's still room for improvement in China's human rights policies. A reminder now of our top story. Officials in the U.S. state of Maine have confirmed that the suspected gunman who killed 18 people has been found dead. Robert Card had died from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. President Biden now issuing a statement saying that we are grateful that Lewiston is safe and he called on Republicans in Congress to, quote, fulfill their obligation to keep the American people safe. A reminder, you can get the latest on that story, plus all the developments in Israel and Gaza on our website. That's bbc.com slash news. For our PBS viewers, thank you for watching. Well, let's circle back now to our BBC teams on the ground with a closer look at how Israel's ground operations might actually play out. Our international editor now, Jeremy Bowen, has more. Here in the U.S., the United Nations approved a non-binding resolution calling for a humanitarian truce in Gaza just hours after Israel's defense forces announced their expansion of ground operations. This is the moment that the resolution earned two-thirds support and passed. It's the first U.N. response to the ongoing war after the Security Council failed on four different attempts to reach any kind of consensus on action there. The resolution was proposed by Jordan and had the backing of more than 45 member states, including Egypt, Oman, and the United Arab Emirates. 120 states voted to pass it, and 14 voted to reject it. 45 states abstained from voting altogether. The resolution calls for a, quote, immediate, durable, and sustained humanitarian truce and demands that all parties comply with international humanitarian law. It also calls for the flow of essential aid into Gaza and the release of all civilian hostages. Jordan's resolution makes no mention of the unprecedented attack on Israel by Hamas on October 7th. Well, its passing comes as inside Gaza. Residents are lacking aid and now lacking communication. The director general of the World Health Organization posted on X, formerly Twitter, that the organization, quote, lost touch with its staff, health facilities, workers, and humanitarian partners in Gaza. And he added, this siege makes me gravely concerned for their safety and the immediate health risks of vulnerable patients. We urge the immediate protection of all civilians and full humanitarian access. Now, back at the United Nations, the Israeli ambassador, after that resolution was passed, released this statement condemning it. Of course, that was our UN correspondent, Neda Taufik, who's been following the day's events there from New York. Now, a senior UN official is warning that many more will die from catastrophic aid shortages in Gaza because of Israel's siege of the Strip. The BBC's Fergal Keane now reporting on the situation there. One soldier's story there. Meanwhile, more than 200 hostages are still being held in Gaza. Among them are believed to be these three Israeli children and their mother. Their father, Avihai Brodich, has traveled to Washington to petition U.S. lawmakers to help secure their release and that of other children being held hostage in Gaza by Hamas. My colleague Helena Humphrey spoke with Avihai earlier. 
And a reminder, you can get more stories like that, plus all the latest news on the Israel-Gaza war on our website, bbc.com news. We have a live page there continuously being updated. Or you can download our news app and stay up to date when you are away from your TV. That's all from us in Washington. I'm Carl Nassman. Thank you so much for watching. We'll have plenty more news coming up at the top of the hour. Stay right here on BBC. Hello there. It's remaining unsettled this weekend with low pressure.